Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, hello again, everybody. We're with our fabulous guest, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet and our regular contributor for all things food and wine. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good to see you. So I have a question. We're in the holiday season, and um, lots of uh, opportunities come up to uh, uh, raise a glass of champagne. Uh, do you have any advice for what champagnes? Yes. Um, first, the definition of champagne is a sparkling wine made with a specific method called the classic method, champenoise, which is made in and only in the Champagne district of France, which is north uh, of uh, Paris. And um, it's, a, it's a big section, and they produce a tremendous number, I mean, millions and millions of bottles, uh, not all of the same quality, for starters, but that's what Champagne is. And I'll get back to quality and uh, differences in a minute. <clears throat> now, the rest of France, in the Loire Valley and elsewhere, also produces sparkling wines, and some from the same grapes, which are predominantly Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Meunier, and, um, and Pinot Noir, um, or other grapes. And they are delicious sparkling wines. They are not by law allowed to be called champagne because they don't come from champagne. Um, and <clears throat> some of them are very delicious and they're always much, much less expensive than real so-called champagne. Okay. <clears throat> now, outside of France, Italy also makes spumante. And I don't mean just the so-called Asti spumante, which comes from Asti in the Piedmont region, which tends to be sweet, uh, bubbly, almost like, you know, pop soda. Um, and is not as successful as it used to be. But they also make in Asti and throughout northern Italy some very fine sparkling wines uh, from various grapes, probably the best known of which um, uh, is uh, from uh, the Veneto region. And um, these are wines which could cost anywhere from seven, eight, ten dollars to twenty dollars. Um, up to some, a couple that go up to $40, $50. Um, and they're delicious wines all on their own. They tend to be lighter. And uh, spumante means foaming in Italian, okay? So a sparkling wine is called a spumante, but it's not that sweet, sickly stuff that um, you serve at your uh, daughter's, third daughter's wedding. Um, now, the rest of the world has caught on to this, too, so now there are sparkling wines being made literally everywhere wine is made, and good ones in Spain, where they're called cavas. Um, oh, oh, by the way, the Italian uh, wines from uh, the Veneto called Prosecco, which is uh, oceans of it has flown, uh, no, oceans don't fly, crashed onto the uh, American shores in recent years. That's what you make the Bellini with, with uh, peach juice. So in Spain, they have cavas, and uh, in uh, North America, um, especially on the, the East Coast, um, there are sparkling wines that uh, come out of New York. There are sparkling wines that come out of certainly California and um, the Pacific Northwest. And even you've, there are sparkling wines being made in Arizona and Texas, and then South America. Having said all of that, why would you choose champagne over any of those or all of those. Well, first of all, it's traditional to do so because it is the celebratory. Um, see that cat back there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's drinking out of his champagne. He's right. drinking out of his champagne bowl. It is traditional. It is very, very festive. And Hollywood has made us all believe that uh, champagne is the only thing you can drink for certain occasions, whether you're James Bond or uh, Pepe Le Pew, you know. Um, and the French have been very, very successful at marketing uh, their product this way. And I remember during the millennial, the uh, French said, you better buy your champagne because there's not going to be enough left. Well, there was plenty left. There's always millions of bottles of champagne, which are down in these calves, these vast caves, calves, I call them, um, in champagne um, uh, underneath the ground where they, they keep them stored. Um, now, there are m many, many of the greatest champagne producers called Marx, Marx, 
uh, and you've heard them, Dom Perignon and, and Ger- Perrier Jouet and Moet and Bollinger and Tattinger and so forth. These are all various marks, but very few of them, if any, um, use exclusively grapes grown in their own vineyards. That means that they, unlike in Bordeaux or in Burgundy, um, that means they are buying up their grapes from all over Champagne. And they have contracts every single year. Now, there are better vineyards and they're not so hot vineyards. And there are vineyards that produce grapes that are good for blending in Champagne. So what I'm getting at is that you can depend upon one of those great marks um, to be very, very consistent because they're master blenders make them to be so and like if you like the taste of tattinger it's going to taste that way every single year and if you like the taste of bollinger that's the way it's going to taste but within those um uh, various marks they have learned uh through marketing that you can't just offer just one champagne that you've stood behind for a hundred years you have to offer reserve champagnes vintage champagnes who come only in certain years and are blends from only that year there are um cuvee speciales and there are uh, the um, those which can go up to three four hundred dollars um, a bottle called prestige cuvées, prestige blends, which they say is they're very, very top of the line. So to me, the difference between a regular, let's say a red stripe label uh, and a uh, reserve and, and all of these others, it's a very subtle difference to most people. I also find that the um, uh, the cuvées, the prestige cuvées, are so bone dry by design that they don't have uh, the kind of fruit and the light, light, pale sweetness that uh, you like to have from a bottle of white wine that happens to have bubbles. So that's a decision. If you got three, four hundred dollars to throw around, um, you're doing it more or less either for your high connoisseur friends or your friends who just get high and <laughs> you can serve them anything you want. Um, but increasingly, Again, if you're having a Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner and you're having 10, 15, 20 people over, you have to really assess how many of these people are connoisseurs, how many of them are going to say, ooh, you're serving the prestige cuvee from uh, Madame Clicquot. Um, not many. And maybe Uncle Joe doesn't even really like wine or he'll drink anything you put in front of him. I think you really have to assess that in a family situation. On New Year's Eve, you can get a little bit more elaborate. But um, you know, at, at my house, we drink sparkling wine all the time, but it's rarely champagne. Or if it is champagne, it's one that costs under $50. And very often it could be a bubbly from um, from uh, Italy or a cava from Spain, which is only costing 12 to $20 a bottle. So, John, uh, is it fair to say that if I have a favorite, let's say, American winery, mm. Cal- California winery is what I'm thinking of, is it fair to say that if they make a champagne that I'm probably going to be fine with that? Didn't you listen to what I just said? <laughs> I can't call it champagne if it's not champagne. If they're making it in California, they're calling a, it a sparkling wine. A sparkling wine. wine. A sparkling yeah. wine. Now, what was your stupid question? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Going with the label. If I've got a winery that I like, it's a big winery, big California winery, and they make a sparkling wine, um, I should just probably just go with that. I don't have to worry about reading the labels and champagne versus spumante. No, right. And despite what I just so snarkily said that um, almost not all, but almost all of the um, sparkling wines in California made by the kinds of producers of, of, uh, of, of note uh, are making it by the so-called champagne method, which is too technical to go into. But it is different from a Charmat method or a Chapitalization method, which um, is much cheaper to do. And you can make sparkling wines in enormous bulk without going through the tedious process of the classic method. So if you're taking like um, Domaine Chandon, which is a very well-known um, sparkling wine company out there in the, in the Napa Valley, um, that's being made by the um, method, the, the champagne method. Same exact 
method and same exact grapes. Good. Well, we don't have any champagne with us this morning, but I will give you a toast and a cup of coffee. How's that sound? Vodka here, I'll do. And uh, and during the during the uh, holidays, as we all celebrate, um, we'll be thinking of you, and uh, we'll probably be discussing your champagne advice. We might play this video on New Year's Eve. What do you think? Yeah, good yeah. idea. Very good idea. That should that should be required. Yes. Thanks, Repo John. Required watching for New Year's Eve. See you. Yes. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.